When you see websites with interactions and 3D animations like these, you probably think that the creator used really complex coding languages to make them. Well, that was true up until today. Framer, the designer's favorite no-code website builder, just released 3D transforms, which basically means that from now on, you can just jump onto the Framer canvas and project any layer in 3D space while keeping it completely editable. In this crash course, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about 3D transforms, so you can also create websites with interactions and 3D animations like these without writing a single line of code, even if you are a complete beginner. My name is Nandi, this is Freemur University, and let's get started. So I'm gonna break this video up into three sections. In the first section, we're gonna go through each transform that's been added to Framer, and we're gonna learn about what each one does. Then we're gonna put them into practice and see how we can use them together with components to create this 3D card flip interaction. At the end, I'm gonna also show you how you can use this new feature together with scroll transforms to rotate this 3D cube around on our website as we scroll down. So without any further ado, let's jump into the first section and talk about the new transforms. So as you can see, here I am in my Framer project and I have a little card here, which is basically just a frame, which has a background image set as a fill. And if I look on the right panel, we see this transforms section now, which is pretty much new. So if we click this, we see all the new options here. So I'm gonna break these up into two categories just so you can understand them better. So the first category is called basic 3D transforms, which include scale, skew, and rotate. These are fundamental transformations that alter the size, orientation, or shape of an element in the 3D space. So when you, you know, apply them to the element, you can see their effect immediately. The other category is called transform modifiers, and these include depth, perspective, origin, backface, and preserve 3D. These are modifiers that change the appearance and behavior of already transformed elements. So it is really important that you will only see the effect of these if you apply them to elements that already have basic 3D transforms, so either a scale, skew, or rotate. So let's take a look at scale, for example. You can see that it is pretty simple. We can scale the element up or down. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to use it. We have also skew, which is also really simple. We can skew it along the X or the Y axis. We have rotate. This is a bit more interesting because we can use either 2D or 3D rotation. So 2D rotation is really simple. You just rotate it around. However, if you use 3D rotation, now you have these X, Y, and Z options. And if you adjust these, you can see that the element now, you know, basically transforms in a 3D space. However, it still looks quite flat. So that's where a transform modifier comes in, which is called perspective. So if you want to make these 3D rotations look really 3D and you want to make sure that the 3D effect is more intense, you can apply the perspective modifier. So here you can use a bigger or a smaller value. Basically, the smaller value you have, the more intense 3D effect you will get. So as you can see, if I use 500, this 3D effect is really, really intense. However, if I use 5000, it still looks quite flat. So I'm going to just apply 1200 here. And the really great thing about these transforms in Framer is that even though that now this element is transformed in the 3D space, I can still resize it really easily. I can just you know, do the same thing I do in Figma, for example, and just, you know, resize the element. Even I can just add a frame within this and I instantly see how my element will be placed within this 3D space. 
So it is really cool. I can also hit T on my keyboard and draw a text box here. I can write card here and I can just set the color to white. And oops, as you can see, it is uh, flipped around and that's why the text is mirrored. So I'm gonna just flip it like this. So now we see the text correctly. So I can also just resize this text box here and place it anywhere. And I, as you can see, I can edit this element in the 3D space on this canvas here. And then I can just hit publish and it is live on the internet as a website. So Framer just got really, really powerful. And I'm gonna show you guys what you can create with this. Every single example will blow your mind. So another transform modifier is origin. So if I zero out these rotations, you will see that I can apply origin here. And now the default setting is 50% on the X and 50% on the Y. This basically means that now the origin is in the center of this element. This is the default setting. So now if we start rotating this, you will see that it is being rotated from the center. However, if I change this origin to the, I don't know, top right corner, you will see that if I start rotating this now, it will be rotated from the top right corner. So basically the origin is specifying the transformation reference point within the element. That's pretty cool and it is easy to use. However, if you have a hard time figuring out how to position your you know, origin point correctly, I have this little graphic that I'm gonna show you. So where it is, where it is origin, okay. So here we have this little graphic. So I'm gonna place this dot here to the middle because now the origin of this card is set to 50%, 50%, which basically means the center. So this dot means the origin point of the card. And you can also see that we have this X and the Y axis here. As you can see here, we have 0% and on the right we have 100 and also on the bottom we have 100%. So now this dot is X 50% and Y 50%. So let's say I want to move this to the bottom right corner. What I have to do now is go 100% on the X axis and also go 100% on the Y axis. So if I set 100% 100%, I can now rotate this and you will see that the reference point is indeed in the bottom right corner. So if you ever have trouble setting this origin point with these percentage values, just look at this little graphic and it will help you a lot. So with these two cards, I want to show you another transform with a fire, which is called the back face. So if I have this card here and start rotating it on the Y axis, you will see that I can flip this around and I will see the backside of the layer, which is basically just a mirrored version of the front face of the layer. So what if I want to hide this backside of the element? I can just add the transform modifier called backface and I can set the backface visibility to hidden. So now as you can see, if this element is flipped around, so we are seeing the backside of it, we cannot see anything because the back face is set to hidden. If we set it to visible, of course, then we can see it. But let's take a look at how this works in this other example, because things get a bit tricky here. So on this other card, as you can see, we have a parent frame, which has a background frame and then also another frame for the button. So these are within this card frame. Let's say I rotate this card around along the Y axis. You can see again, we see basically the same thing that we saw before. We just see a mirrored version of the content that we see on the front side of the element. However, what if we say that, okay, I don't want to see the backside of this background frame here. So I can set the backface visibility to hidden 
and for some reason it doesn't disappear. Like, this is completely flipped around, but still the element that is within the layer that is being flipped around doesn't really, you know, do anything when I set it to back face visibility hidden. So why is this happening? The reason is that basically we are indeed rotating the card to around. However, the child elements, so the background and the button is not really rotating. You can see it clearly because the back face is still visible. So the background is not rotated around. If we add rotation here and flip it around, you will see that now the back face is indeed hidden because now the background element is also rotated. But what if I don't want to add this rotation here as well? I just want to make sure that whenever this card is flipped around, all the other elements within that are also flipped around. So basically they are within the same 3D space. And the way I can do that is by using another transform modifier, which is called Preserve 3D. So if I add Preserve 3D and set it to yes on the parent frame, that will basically mean that its child elements, so the background and the button, will be in the same 3D space, so they will also be flipped around. So now if I set the background to back face hidden, it will be hidden. If I set it to visible, it will be visible. You know, it might be a bit tricky to understand what Preserve 3D actually does, but I will try to explain to you in another example as well, just to make sure that you completely understand it. So now I just uh, rotated this around a little bit differently and I will come back to this card one. So I'm gonna set Y to zero and I will add another transfer modifier, which is a depth. So as you can see, if I increase the depth, this card is basically getting bigger or getting smaller. But it is not just a simple scale transform, it is, you know, called depth, so it must be different. It is different because it is moving this element along the Z axis. So in order to explain to you what is Z axis, I'm gonna pull up my browser because I have this little website here that will help us understand. So as you can see, we are here in the 3D space. We have a Y axis and we have an X axis. Basically, that's what we see right here. Here in the middle, we cannot really see it, but I'm gonna rotate it in a minute. We have the Z axis. So if I rotate this, you will see that we have the Z axis here. But since we are looking at this from this direction, the Z axis is basically pointing towards us. So in this case, the Z axis is again pointing towards us. So if we move the element alongside that axis, we can basically see that it is either coming closer to us or moving away from us and therefore getting smaller. It is really important that this only works if we have perspective applied to this element, because if perspective is not applied, then basically this card is not even in the 3D space. However, if we apply perspective, you will see that depth works perfectly. And again, here, if we want to have a more intense 3D effect, we can set a lower perspective value. So, you know, it will scale up much more or go, uh, you know, further away, or we can have a bigger perspective value. And so then the, you know, scale effect of this depth will not be as uh, intense. So now let's take a look at what happens if we move this button with the depth. So as you can see, if I adjust the depth on this button, nothing happens. It is because we learned that in order to see the effect of the depth transform, we have to have the element within a 3D space. And as you can see here, it is not in a 3D space because it doesn't have perspective applied to it. If we apply perspective, you see that I can change the depth now and I see the effect. However, it still comes towards us or moving away from us, which is not really what I expected to do because I see that this element is now facing upwards. So I would 
basically assume that we see something like this right here. And so the Z axis is basically pointing to the top. So why it is not moving to the top? It is because even though I set a perspective value on this, it will not be in the same 3D space as the card to frame because that frame is its parent and that is the layer that is being rotated like this. And so we again see the same problem here that this child layer is not being rotated the same way as its parent. So again, this is where we can use Preserve 3D to fix these little issues. So I'm gonna go to card two and set Preserve 3D to yes. So now in theory, the button is in the same 3D space as its parent, so card to frame. So now if I move the depth, it will be moved alongside the Z axis, so to the top. So let's see what happens. And exactly, it moves to the top or to the bottom. So that looks pretty cool because now we can kind of like elevate it from, from this card. And if you rotate it around like this, it looks pretty cool as you can see. So I can just rotate it around and it will be nicely elevated from that uh, card layer. So what we learned about Preserve 3D here is that when we are transforming elements and we have multiple layers of elements that we are transforming around, we usually have to use this Preserve 3D setting on the parent so that its child elements will also be within the same 3D space. And a little side note here, if we, for example, wanna also elevate the text from the button, then we will also have to set Preserve 3D on the button. So I'm gonna just rotate it a little bit more like this so we can see. So if I select text and then add transforms and I'm gonna select depth here, you will see that it, it doesn't do anything again. It's because even though we have Preserve 3D on card two, it is only making sure that the BG and the button is within the same 3D space. However, the get started text is not within the 3D space because it is nested further down. So if we want it to be in the same 3D space as the card two, we have to also set the preserve 3D for the button. So I'm gonna set preserve 3D. So now as you can see, if I select this button and change the depth, you can see that I can also elevate it from the uh, button and I will not see it because the background is also black. So I'm gonna just change the color here to maybe, I don't even know what color I should do. Maybe I should just use gray. So you can see that now it is also in the same 3D space. So basically if you run into any issues, maybe some transform is not doing the thing that you wanna do then probably you should think about using Preserve 3D and making sure that each layer has Preserve 3D. So if layers are nested further down, each level should have a Preserve 3D. So now we went through all the transforms and learned about them briefly, but now let's move into the second section of this video and take a look at how we can, you know, take them into practice and use them with components to create interactions like this 3D card flip interaction. As you can see, this is a card that I can click and then it rotates around. We see a completely different design here with different images, different text, and the content of the card, so the text and the button, is also, as you can see, elevated from the, from the other content of the card. So it has this really nice 3D effect. So we're gonna go through each step uh, of creating this little card. So as you can see, we already have all the content that we need. So we're gonna just add all the transforms and uh, the needed variants for this little effect. So first of all, I'm gonna make sure that I turn this card component into a component. So I'm gonna press Option, Command and K on my keyboard and hit create. So now as you can see, here we are on the component canvas and we can start applying transforms to these. So before I apply any 3D transform, I just wanna 
quickly show you the structure of this little component. So as you can see, we have a layer here, a frame that houses two frames. One is called front and one is called back. If I hide the front one, you will see that behind that we have the back, which is basically the content that we want to see on the back side of this card. And of course, within these, we have an image and the rest of the content, which is basically text and uh, a button. And we have the same content within the back. So let's take a look at what happens if we select these faces and apply a transform to that. So it's gonna be a rotate. We're gonna have 3D rotation and let's flip this around. But as you can see, it's still pretty flat. So I'm gonna add the perspective that we learned about. I'm gonna use 1800. So now as you can see, it's pretty much 3D. And let's see what happens if we flip this around. You can see that we see the front content in a mirrored version. So it is nothing special. However, I just wanna quickly tell you something. You cannot apply transforms to the primary variant here. So I cannot apply the rotation here. And that's why I have these faces here that basically houses the front and the back face. So because I can add transforms to this and I can rotate the card like that. So that was just a little side note here. So now as you can see, we have these faces frame and I'm rotating it, but we can still see the front design. So let's take a look at what happens if we select the front and set the back face visibility to no. So back face is now hidden, but we can still see it. We already know why is that, because the parent has to have the preserve 3D to make sure that the child elements are also within the same 3D space. So now that's pretty great. The front is now hidden when we flip this around. So again, here we see the front and here we see the back. But there is a little issue here because the back here is mirrored. So how can we solve this? Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the back and I'm gonna flip this around. So I'm gonna use 3D rotation. And as you can see, I can just flip this like this and it will be all good. So now if I select the faces and rotate this, you'll see that they look pretty good. When I rotate this, the front disappears because its back face is set to hidden and the back, you know, appears because that's the layer that is below the front and it is not mirrored anymore because we basically counter that mirror by rotating it by minus 180 degrees on the Y axis. So that's it, that's pretty nice. However, what I also wanna do is I wanna make sure that the content, so the text and the buttons are elevated. So in order to do that, I will have to select the contents here and make sure that they have a depth transform. So I'm gonna use depth here, but again, it doesn't really work. And that's because now I have to set the preserve 3D for the front and the back as well, because we learned that if we have multiple layers of nesting, we have to make sure that if we enter a new level, so here, front and back includes you know more layers that will be transformed that's why the back and front will also have preserve 3d so i'm gonna set preserve 3d to yes and now as you can see the depth is working on the content so now i just have to set a proper value so i don't even know what should i use maybe 44 so now if we rotate this face around you will see that we get this amazing effect. So now all we have to do is to here on the variant one have Y on a zero, and then we can create another variant. And here comes the great part because here on another variant, I can just change this value, this rotation to minus 180, and that's it. I can also rename these, so front and back. And now all I have to do is to add interactions to these and Framer will smartly animate between these states. 
So I will start an interaction from front. I will just connect it to back. It will happen on tap. So when we tap front, we will go to back. And when we tap back, we go to front. Basically, that's it. We can also make sure that we have a little bit slower transition here by setting maybe 250. And we can now take a look at this. As you can see, if I click this, it flips around in 3D and it works really well. Um, so it's pretty cool. As you can see, you can use these transforms in components as well really easily. If I want to add a little scale up effect, I can just click hover here and then faces and just add a little scale here, scale 1.1. And then I can add the same thing here, scale. 1.1 will be added here as well. And when we hover these cards, you'll see that now we also have the scale up effect. So as I said before, this feature is insanely powerful. So in this other demo, as you can see, we have this little cube. And as you, you can see that it looks pretty cool. So like, I, I just can't believe that we can do this in framework on the canvas without writing any code, but whatever. So what I want to do here is I want to show you that you can use these 3D transforms with scroll transforms as well. So you can trigger these transformations with scroll. So I will just set these back to zero because this will be the starting state because it, it looks quite funny that first you kind of think that this is just a rectangle and then you start scrolling and you see this 3D cube thing, uh, it looks pretty good. So what I will do is basically I will select this cube and I will add a scroll transform. But before that, I just wanna click and quickly show you this little setup that I have. So basically as I scroll down on this page, this cube is sticking to the top of the viewport and it is sticking to the top of the viewport until we reach the end of this container. So as you can see, we have a longer container. It is 200 VH, which basically means that 200% of the given viewport. And then within that, we have the sticky frame, which is 100 VH, 100% 100 of the given viewport. And, this is, and it is set to sticky. So basically it will stick to the top of the viewport until we reach the end of the container, which is right here. Um, yeah, sticky, just so you know, sticky only works if the parent frames, so container, main and desktop are all set to overflow visible. So this is our basic setup. Now I can go here and make sure that the cube gets the scroll transform effect. This scroll transform will be triggered with a section in view because we also have a scroll section for the container. So this container here, so it has the scroll section called one. And so we can trigger the animation with that section. So section in view, section is called one. And then I can set the viewport to the top of the viewport. So it starts animating when this section reaches the top of the viewport. And then I can specify a from and a to state. So from state will be one opacity, one scale. And the to state will be a 3D rotation maybe 130 and 130 here as well. And I can also add this transition here just to make sure that it will be really smooth. So if I take a look at this, as you can see, as I start scrolling on this page, this cube starts rotating around. And I did this in Framer on the canvas without writing any code. And again, it's, it's pretty cool. Like, look at this, I can just rotate this cube like this. And then I have all these front, back, bottom, right. These are basically the sides of this cube. And if I want to make the right side a little bigger, I can just do this. And I can edit it in the 3D space. Show me another tool that allows you to create websites without coding and has this feature. You will not be able to do that. I'm just gonna tell you this. Framer is the first to do this on a freeform canvas. And it is just amazing. So yeah, 
that's all you need to know about 3D transforms in Framer. If you want to learn more about Framer, make sure to check out Framer.University. I have a bunch of more free resources and lessons like this on that website, and I'm pretty sure that those will help you master website building with Framer. Make sure to like this video, subscribe for more, and I'm going to see you in the next one.